well hi all so i've got this uh, brand spanking new phone uh with this nice kind of uh camera on it because my other one broke down um and i've not done an update uh to youtube for quite a while really so and everybody's emailing me going tony tony what do you think of this what do you think of that ufos where are you yes i've been unwell actually um and i noticed that um my updates are sadly lacking but we're gonna start now getting some updates to you about what's going on. And I'm going to comment on some of the stuff that is going on, what we see in the mainstream media uh, regarding the UFO phenomenon. It's a long time in coming from me. Uh, I just haven't had a chance. I've been, uh, as I say, on Wells. There's been a lot going on. Um, yeah, and uh, that's the thing. Recently, then, uh, I'm going to give you an update, some updates for you anyway. I'm working, hopefully, on a project with Film 4. Uh, they'll be coming back at some point, I think, next month to do a bit more work with me. They've already been they're quite happy with that, and then they're coming back. Um, we're going to try and hustle some extra TV work this year as well. It's a, That's a must. That needs to be done. Um, and I'm writing a book, which is called Revelations of a Paranormal Intelligence Asset. And in that book, the reason why it's called Revelations of a Paranormal Intelligence Asset um, is the fact that the stuff that has been going on uh, in my journals that I've never really talked about, where I'm technically asleep to actually what is going on. I'm in this strange traumatic zone with everything. There's a couple of major incidents, major UFO stuff going on that relates more to paranormal warfare um, and all that kind of thing. Some of it, one of it's quite shocking. One entry in particular, I'm thinking, my God, I remember that. Um, and I've never really talked about it, never really published it. And I'm going to keep it that way to surprise people. It's the stuff science fiction movies are made of. Uh, either I've got a creative imagination or this stuff really happened, and it did really happen. But remember, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. So we know that this situation is occurring with UFOs, but we prove that one is a fantasist, one is a lunatic, anything and everything to try and prevent the truth from getting out there. I'm utterly convinced, ladies and gentlemen, that they'd sooner nuke our cities than actually go and disclose what is going on. What's the biggest secret about all this? That's the, I think that's the, the big question. Um, I've dealt with this uh, for many a year now, and uh, there are a lot of forces out there that manoeuvre around us, manoeuvre around human affairs. And I recently saw an interview given by Luis Elizondo to the, uh, I think it was Tucker Carlson on CNN, I haven't reached those dizzy heights yet. Uh, but there is uh, Mr. Elizondo uh, talking his thing, doing his stuff. And what's that all about? Well, I'm a 40-year veteran of dealing with the UFO phenomenon. Uh, the messenger will always get shot. But the thing is this. There's, it's quite comical to see the narrative being played out. And what's happening is you've got what's known in the media, ladies and gents, as controlled media narrative. So the information regarding the UFO phenomena is controlled uh, into the media. None dare call it alien, and it's controlled. There, it's quite clear that there is a cover-up going on, and it's for nefarious reasons. And it's probably quite clear that Mr. Elizondo and his department in the DIA probably know far more than what they're letting on. Um, it's probably true that Mr. Elizondo is letting, he's knowing far more than what he's letting on. Uh, and there's this kind of comical circus going on of, of we don't know what they are. Uh, we're looking into it. Um, they're, they're craft of some description. They could be a foreign adversary. Um, and this kind of thing, the situation is, is that they do know what they are. And we are being lied to for nefarious reasons. Um, but the, the problem with the UFO cover-up, and I think the US government, is this, is that one half does not know what the other half is doing with it. And secondly, in fairness to, let us say, the US Navy, you probably know quite a lot about this subject, um, is the fact that you cannot wander around with your eyes closed militarily. You can't live in this New Age fantasy world, ladies and gentlemen, of all aliens are friendly, aren't they nice? Because that's not true. Uh, and there is a possibility at some level uh, that perhaps our military has engaged them at a negative level where some kind of argy-bargy has gone on with these objects. And our military is trying to understand what is going on. One of the biggest um, taboos, I wouldn't call it a secret, sorry, I'd call it a taboo, uh, is this. The 
there's one extraterrestrial group called Nordics. They're blonde, they're blue-eyed, they're real, uh, and they've been in my life quite a lot over the years. And the biggest taboo secret of all this is this. They're going on in the media about the fact that we don't know what they are, we don't know where they come from. But the taboo is this. They come from mountain regions, and they're also coming from the oceans, and they are in routine communication, uh, and they have the distinct capabilities to communicate with our governments. For example, the government of France would probably know far more about this than what they're letting on as well. The government of France has its own organisation called GPAN. That government possibly would know uh, about the Nordic ETs. Nordics are, uh, are using advanced technology. Nordics have a command structure like similar to the US military. And it would appear that these extraterrestrials from the oceans and from the skies uh, who are occupying our Earth are waving at some of our governments to communicate with them. And it would be good business to do so, considering that the Nordics, for example, are nearly seven to eight hundred years ahead in technology. They are real. They come from Andromeda and other areas. But of course, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. And we live in a paradigm where this is all denied. The situation I'm facing with is an unusual one, to say the least, because if you look at some of my uh, stuff, it's out there, it's a bit far out, and it's of interest to certain parties. I'm an interesting guy to certain parties. And I had an incident uh, a few weeks ago when I'm writing my book here, which is a struggle, it's not, not easy for me. And I'm writing my book, and a lot of it is to do with uh, paranormal espionage. A lot of it is to do with, um, in the journals, you can clearly see that I am witnessing some type of environment, some type of operational theatre uh, that is kind of like, how can I put it, um, uh, kind of like, a bit like the movie Inception, or a bit like the Matrix, it's like an operational environment, it's like a, a space-time continuum really, that's kind, of the, that's kind of the thing that it is, and when you look at that very closely, you would understand that any aliens that are communicating uh, do not do it by, let us say, SETI or anything like that. If they're going to communicate, they're going to communicate via the light barrier, via the power of thought, and via the power of the subconscious. Here a case in point a few weeks ago. Uh, it was a few weeks ago as well. These uh, Nordics in their UFOs came in over these flats. I know when they're here. I haven't heard them for a while. But quiet does not mean to say that they are quiet. They can be full of surprises. And a few weeks ago, uh, something happened where, round about 3, 4 in the morning, they turned up. And they indicated that it was them. I could hear them in my subconscious. And what they did is they did something very interesting. They started communicating with people who I know. One man who I know is a family man. They started having a brief chat with him. Then they started having a brief chat with a guy I know who's uh, quite prominent in the community. Uh, and they were commenting on what a great job he does. And then somebody else and somebody else. And what they were doing, they were communicating over non-locality and they were having a routine chat with them. They indicated that they were indeed Nordics. They indicated that they were from an, a base out in the ocean somewhere. Uh, and then they said, excuse me, we got to go. And off they went. Um, so they come in, they had a chat and on their way they went. The taboo is this. A member of the public can routinely communicate with them, and that's taboo. You, it really, really is. This is the kind of comical circus that it is. Certain members of the public may routinely communicate with them when they come out of our oceans or when they come out of the mountain regions, and they have a lot to say. Not only that, when you get to know them, you will suddenly realise what they are communicating across this time continuum kind of environment, if you could call it that. I may have got my wording wrong on it. Basically, you're in a barrage balloon. It's like you're in a big balloon with them. And you can see the landscape of the future. And you can see what is going on. And you are at a st strategic advantage in that environment. And that is of interest to other nations as well. These Nordics that are coming in, and the beings in the oceans that are from other universes, that come from other oceans in other universes and then use our oceans as bases is correct. This is the bit that perhaps, in fairness, our navy, our military, Mr. Elizondo, perhaps couldn't quite tell you because there is 
a nefarious cover-up going on. And actually, in fairness to Mr. Elizondo, he has to be careful what he says, because there has been something going on uh, that could be described as a diplomatic incident with E.T. and could be described as America wishing to review its place in the galactic community. As we go on, America will probably discover, as I've passed to the next life, America will probably discover that we are not alone in the universe. They already know this. And perhaps they already know that there is some sort of liaison, a very secretive one, going on behind the scenes. Definitely humanity cannot keep up with their technology at this, this level. Uh, and certainly with the Nordics, there is environmental concern, concerns from them. These beings that are sharing our Earth as bases communicate to our governments as well a type of civil contingencies warning they're here they're watching and they're communicating but of course if mr elizondo and such were on cnn they couldn't tell you any of that perhaps i'm filling in the in the blanks this is interesting this environment that i'm talking of that's similar to the movie inception uh you know where they go in subconsciously and they're asleep in another environment in another reality very correct and these beings are quite advanced and they will routinely step into this environment and step out again. It's like a communications network. And that's what my book is all about. It tells the story of how I was routinely kind of incepted on. I was routinely part of some sort of very bizarre classified project that kind of expanded on steroids into something else very big. Uh, and, and it's due to... All the information that I've put out triggered it. It's a paradox. So all the information I'm putting out actually triggered this. Uh, it's quite bizarre, but it's to do with time and history. And it's as if my journals are telling things that are not governed by the rules of time. And that's very interesting as well. And so a few weeks ago, you see, what, you don't, what people maybe don't know as well is that some of these countries, um, they have their own paranormal espionage units from France to Germany to uh, Russia, America, China. China uh, are actually way ahead in the psychic warfare. In their, They're there. <laughs> they're actually quite ahead. Russia are actually quite ahead as well in all this. And they, have, uh, they had a psychic warfare unit called Troop 10,003. When I tried to make inquiries to the head of that unit, um, a guy called General Savin, and I've repeatedly tried, uh, I wanted to get information from them regarding the fact that they had communicated with E.T. at a medical level. The extraterrestrials were not giving them any information to do with matters military. It was all to do with medical information. And the general of that unit, Alexis Savin, used female psychics, a whole team of them, because women uh, were a lot better at it. Listen, back in the day when I was, I had a, like a managerial job, I had a team of girlies working with me. They were the top girls. Uh, I could understand it. They didn't whinge and moan like fellas. They just got on with the job. Uh, and I'm still friends with them to this day. They were super girls. So you can understand why uh, Mr. Savin would use them. And the female ETs communicate uh, very actively as well. Uh, and they kind of like are very much like female earth women. You could, you could get one of these female ETs on a TV chat show. And she would happily sit there and talk about her family and her planet and her children like earth women. But that's taboo. You you can't come out with that in our society. There's unwritten laws that say, no, you can't say that. Not that you can't say it, but it's unheard of. It's completely taboo. It's the equivalent of saying that the earth doesn't revolve around the sun. But they could very easily. You could just imagine one of them sat there on Loose Women, for example. Uh, you could, honestly, just talking about their family, their planet. And the other thing as well with these ETs in 40 years of dealing with all this is that these extraterrestrial groups, their children know as a matter of education that we are not alone in the universe as a matter of education. Um, how I came about knowing all this is a very long story indeed. But it takes me round now to the point of the matter, which is all about the world of paranormal espionage. There's another uh, kind of arms race going on, and it's in the world of the psychic, and it's in the world of uh, psychic warfare, remote viewing, and all that kind of thing. And um, countries uh, are developing these programs on the sly. One country in particular um, came my way as I was sleeping, and what they were doing is they were trying to get a glimpse 
of these ET coming in into this environment, into this continuum space-time realm, a bit like the movie Inception, could they possibly see them? And what happened was, we, we, we had this guy come in. Ah, Mr. Tony, Mr. Tony, I am remote viewer. Wait, he said, he said who he belonged to. Military organisation. Country of origin. The type of country that doesn't see eye to eye with America. Um, and he started going on uh, about certain things. And he came out with two things that only I knew, but he seemed to know of, due to what he was looking for in his psychic abilities. So here he is. Imagine. This is the thing. He represents a country that's quite oppressive. He's got a he's a military guy, and he's one of these psychics. I kid you not. And in he comes in. Ah, Mr. Tony, my name is and he gave this comical code word as to who he was. Blah blah blah. Oh, Mr. Tony, you have contact with the extraterrestrial. We need to know all about this. I am a uh, telepath from gave the name of the military organization. Uh came as no surprise really. I would like to know about this. I would like to know about that. Uh, you have uh, this Mr. Topping and that Mr. Topping. It is good to speak to you. The thing is, is I had nothing to hide from him. But this is what I said to him, which I thought was fascinating. I remember saying in sleep to him, um, careful, son, you're indoctrinated. You might be spiritually awakened if you come into this environment. What was I talking about? Well, as Yuri Geller has rightly pointed out, Ah, uh, there is a force out there that watches, that oversees, that looks, that's evolved, creates planets and universes. The Bible points to it. Other religious works may point to it as being a presence of supreme intelligence. So you imagine this guy is coming in and he's lit, he's amped. He's, he's like a, a nerd in a network. So you can imagine that this kind of mainframe computer creator sees this nerd in my environment that I'm wired and amped to. And this guy gets affected by it. So he kind of like has a spiritual awakening. A lot of the US psychics did as well. A lot of the Russian psychics did when they came into this environment. They realized that there was indeed a great presence of creation out there, guiding humanity, steering us. And as Yuri Geller rightly pointed out, you cannot go around cannot go around doing your own thing and abusing. It appears that the universe has a law and a recoil to it. Um, and oddly enough, some of these Nordic ETs have their own judiciary system, their own laws. Uh, they very much mirror a command structure, as I say, like human beings. It's very interesting. So this guy, uh, he came in, he had a look around, he said what he needed to say, but he didn't learn anything. Uh, and then he wandered, he kind of like wandered off. Ah, Mr. Tony, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I will call in you on again. Blah, 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 blah. And off he went. Then we had a woman come in. Ah, Mr. Tony, yeah, da, da, da. you're a nice person. You are very brave. We are outraged as to what happened with your mum and you and everything you had to put up with. You're a brave man. So it, somehow it would appear that I commanded their respect. I have nothing to hide. My information is quite open, really. There's some stuff that you can't talk about because you have to be safe, yeah. There's some stuff Mr. Elizondo couldn't talk about. There's some stuff that Mr. Savin, the Russian uh, psychic chap, couldn't talk about. But it was interesting to note that this man, he returned to me a few weeks later saying, Mr. Tony, ah, uh, no, no, hello again. You are right. I have somehow had an awakening. It is very strange. Oh, he says, and then he went on his way again. Um... Recently, he came back again with the same, uh, Mr. Tony, we are, we are here, we are watching in fascination, blah, blah. So we see that somehow, uh, if there's one thing that contact with E.T. does, it's bring people together in unusual ways. Because I think the last thing uh, any nation would want, the leader of China, the leader of Russia, Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, who's, who, I mean, our government must be dealing with some extraordinary stuff in terms of national security issues at the moment. Uh, America, all this kind of thing. They don't want their children running into nuclear shelters. They don't want to be lobbing nukes at each other. And that's what's being continually pointed out by these advanced beings who are sharing our planet as a base. They're kind of opening hailing frequencies to our governments. Uh, and I think communication is occurring 
At the moment, it's all quiet, but I'm still expecting to film something spectacular. But the Nordics, for example, have gone strangely quiet. Although a few weeks ago, about two weeks ago, they appeared again, but didn't quite reveal themselves. But what they showed me, in terms of the extraordinary visions I had, was the fact that they had a, a transport infrastructure and trains like we would have on Earth. But these trains were absolutely incredible in look. And some of them, it was like a, I don't know, a, like mirroring what they saw on Earth. They had this remarkable steam-looking train like you would see on Earth. But it wasn't a steam train, but it was shaped that way, like a custom-built train. It looked tremendous. It was like a, I don't know, the environment that you saw. It was like something out of a, an Art Deco city. Those spectacular posters of cities that you see in the 1900. And the cathedral, this great big cathedral with stars shining on it. And it oh my God, ladies and gents, it was unbelievable. Now I do this. It's not for fame. It's not for money. I do this as a historical narrative so that future generations can just have the choice and make that choice to understand whether they believe me or not, whether they don't. Kind of like it's about choice. And we live in Great Britain. And Great Britain is all about choice and freedom of expression. And that's why I do this. And I think people have got to decide, is, is this real? Have I got this creative imagination? Only my book. I think my book says it all. Uh, it really does. So that's what's been going on. Uh, and I've no doubt, uh, there's probably stuff that I've forgotten to mention, but that's what's been going on. It's been quite a while since I've given an update. At the moment, you know, we're battling the inner demons. It's not easy. My dear mother, she keeps coming through sometimes. She departed this uh, this world, you know, uh, in a right state, really, bless her. Uh, and I hope she's all right. But, you know, it's interesting when they talk about threats. Uh, they talk about ETs being hostile. I'll just close on this point. There's one thing that the US government maybe did twig on, but Mr. Elizondo hasn't pointed out that one of the threats could be hybrid biblical. Hybrid biblical. It is no coincidence that America in the 1950s formed an agency called the Collins Elite to research the demonic element behind UFOs in the 1950. And there's a very, very kind of opener to what is really going on behind the scenes. So I hope in the short time I've had, in this short 20-minute briefing, I just covered a few bases for you, uh, and I'll go a bit more in-depth as time progresses. The moment the interactions are quiet, the flyovers have gone quiet as well. Normally I would film something, but nothing's happened. But they're like a jack-in-a-box. Um, so we'll see what went on. But yeah, it's, it's, it's quite amazing, really, to be part of all this. And uh, I hope that future generations will just enjoy these narratives and make of them what they will. Okay, over and out.